The talk of the Olympics today is the surface of the track. Here's how one runner describes it. Quote, you can feel the bounce. Some tracks just absorb your bounce and your motion. This one regenerates it and gives it back to you. That quote from Sydney McLaughlin two, came two days ago during an interview with the New York Times. She later said because of the track surface, world record would probably be possible. And Sydney didn't know then she was talking about herself because she won the 400 meter hurdles last night in world record fashion. Cyclist Kristen Armstrong knows a little something about winning Olympic gold. She did it three times. Kristen, I, the New York Times piece interviewed a lot of runners who all pretty much said the same thing. They were all raving about this track. Of course, you didn't race on a track, you mm -hmm. raced on roads. Can a surface really make a difference? Absolutely, you know, everything I've read about the track, the running track that is, is that there is the company Mondo out of Italy who has worked on this technology. They've been basically supplying tracks for the last 12 years in the Olympic, uh, last 12 Olympics. And so basically their goal is to actually help humans run faster and break records. So it's not, to them it's no surprise, but yeah, it's just like a trampoline when you're absorbing into that track is actually rebounding you and giving you that extra energy. That extra oomph. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it's like a honeycomb underneath that rubber surface that has air pockets. And so what you're what they're describing and what we're hearing is is the truth. And when it comes to road services on, on a bike, yeah, yes, what worked for well basically for basically like smooth versus rough roads, that all came down to tire pressure. Because the harder you pump up your tires, if you have any kind of like bumps in the road, it's just gonna bounce you around and that's slower. If you have a really, really smooth road, mm -hmm. you can pump your tires up a little bit more. But on a bumpy surface, you wanna lower that pressure so that that tire, the rubber, kind of forms in those bumps so that it's not like bouncing you around, right. it's not efficient. There's so much science behind all of this, you know, and it's not just the track that uh, people are raving about. Track cycling is also breaking all kinds of records. Even on the first day of competition, athletes are saying that the velodrome in Tokyo is quick. And interestingly enough, I was doing some research on this too. It's a decades old velodrome, but apparently it's built of Siberian pine wood. And so they're saying that apparently is phenomenal to race on. Absolutely, on the track, on the velodrome, they're made out of wood. And so there's always talk of like new, drill, new velodromes are slow because the wood isn't like worn in yet. Ah. And so the Siberian wood does have something to do with these, these records, but also humid weather, so such as in Tokyo that everyone's feeling is the air is less dense. So regardless, when you're racing in a humid condition, mm -hmm. you're gonna go quicker, it's less dense. So you're quicker through basically the air. The same goes for when you go higher up in altitude. Mm -hmm. Some of the fastest tracks are known to be at high altitude mm -hmm. because the air is less dense. It makes sense when you <laughs> describe it that way. Even swimmers, pool depth yes. can make a difference. Temperature water can make a difference. So you were saying, what about West Y and Downtown Y? <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I, I'll never forget. You know, my, my little, uh, you know, just kind of locally, taking a local is when yeah. I used to swim a lot, the west Y, the, the yeah. temperatures are, are, are colder and the depth is more. And so I swim faster at the west Y than I did at the downtown Y. <laughs> so there you go. All right, Kristen, thanks again for that.